In our next demo, we'll explore a variety of 2D CAD features that will enhance pattern making workflows, along with introducing some fresh content to our cloud library. Let's begin by downloading one of our newest avatars, Emily. We've just added a diverse selection of fresh avatars to our collection. These avatars span from infants to tweens, and we've even included a faceless baby avatar. This update enables technical designers to evaluate and adapt styles for various sizes and age groups. You'll also notice that we have added 50 new blocks to the cloud library. Let's download a 3D block from the kids board. Once you have these two assets, add them to our scene and begin dressing the t-shirt. Since the 3D block was initially designed for the Charlie avatar, you may need to make some size adjustments. Additionally, add a flat sketch to the 2D window and make modifications to the pattern pieces to align them with the design depicted in the sketch. Let's start by hiding pieces in the 3D according to the sketch. Before moving on to the pattern editing, we'll open up the tension and pressure map to review the tightness of the shirt. In the 2D window, remove any unnecessary pattern pieces and resize the t-shirt to fit the avatar properly. To check that the changes we have made improved the fit of the garment, let's refer back to the pressure and tension map. Looking at Emily, we can see that the shirt needs to be made a little bit larger. Using the slide tool, we will adjust the length of the shirt according to the sketch and remove the hem seam. Now, using the pen tool, we'll draw internal lines on the front piece and use a slice tool to create two separate shapes. We'll then remove the previous stitches and add new ones to stitch the new pieces together. Following that, we'll utilize the slash and spread tool to add volume to the bottom part of the shirt before using the move tool to place the updated piece on the avatar. To create the ruching effect, Let's add a rectangle. First, we'll adjust the 3D layer and reduce the grid to 0.5 for smoother draping. Now we can move forward and sew the rectangle on top of the shirt using the multi-stitch. Enable the Undefined Pieces button to arrange the new piece in the 3D window. Use a gizmo for positioning it in the right place. Let's simulate. And use the styling tools to refine the drape. For the incorporated straps, we'll add a rectangle. Using the X symmetry to create a second strap. We'll stitch the straps to the size of the shirt. Next, we'll change the 3D layer to a higher level, lower the grid for smoother drape, and then arrange the new pieces in the 3D window. In this edition, you'll notice a slight update to the gizmo. To ensure precise movement of pieces without errors, press Ctrl on a PC or Command on a Mac to freely adjust the pieces in the 3D window or transfer them between clusters. Let's simulate. Now the shirt is complete. Let's move on to the skirt and add another flat sketch as a reference image for our design. If you're a pattern maker joining us today, we've got some great news. We've upgraded the ellipse tool for even easier pattern creation. Let's start by inserting an ellipse shape. In this release, we have modified the way we draw an ellipse shape. It now begins at the center of the shape rather than a corner point. We have also added an internal center point to the middle of the ellipse shape. These changes enable you to easily create another ellipse and align the two centers, which is particularly useful when crafting circle skirts. This feature allows us to either extract the shape or trace its edges as internal lines. 
which can then be converted into holes. It's a simple and accessible process. Another example is snapping the center point over another point like this. Now let's explore some new options available for the ellipse in the pop-up window. We've introduced the radius and sector options, which will prove useful when creating the precise bell-shaped patterns. To illustrate these features, we'll use them in the context of designing skirt pattern pieces. First, let's determine the waist circumference of our avatar. In the context view under measurements, we can see that the waist value is 57.3 centimeters. We'll round this up to 58 centimeters. To calculate the radius, we'll divide the waist circumference by tau, which is 6.28. When the edges are selected, you can see the length is 58.06 centimeters. This shape will serve as a waistline of our skirt. Now we'll add a new circle to our pattern piece. The pop-up window retains the previous information. To achieve a skirt length of 28.5 centimeters, let's combine it with the radius value we used in the previous step. Align the centers of these two circles, then select all edges on the smaller circle and designate them as internal lines. With this setup, we can now convert the shape into a hole. Now let's move on to dressing the skirt. Enable the undefined pieces to be able to arrange the skirt in the 3D window. Use the gizmo to position it around the waist and parallel to the floor. Before starting the simulation, we'll hide the skirt piece and adjust the avatar's pose to ensure that the circle skirt doesn't intersect with her arms. Unhide the skirt and simulate. Additionally, we'll add a rectangle that will be used as a waistband and stitch it with the circle skirt to secure it around the waist more effectively. Considering that a full circle skirt can have a lot of volume, let's explore how to reduce its fullness. We'll achieve this by utilizing the sector option. Our goal is to achieve a final shape that is a half circle in total using edge symmetry. To make this process easier to follow, we'll break it down into two steps. Firstly, we'll input the waist circumference, which is 58 centimeters, and divide it by 6.28. This gives us a value for a full circle. To obtain a half circle, we'll divide 360 degrees by two. Now, to retrieve the value we need from the sector, we'll multiply the radius by two. Let's confirm if the waist circumference is accurate. The half circle should match the edge of the full circle, we can see in the 2D measurements in the context view that it is the same, 58 centimeters. Now let's add another ellipse. The information displayed in the pop-up window remains the same as the previous step. All that's required is to divide the sector by four and insert the pattern piece. Now we'll insert another ellipse, increase the radius by the skirt length, 28.5 centimeters, and confirm the changes. With both steps in place, we'll align them allowing us to extract a new shape that represents a quarter of the skirt. Now, let's rotate the piece by its edge and apply edge symmetry. By cloning this piece, we'll have both front and back pieces for our skirt, each with half of the skirt's total volume and a length of 28.5 centimeters. These new options offer even more control when creating pattern pieces. In the following step, we'll replace the full skirt with the half skirt. We'll hide the full skirt from the 3D window and then arrange the new pieces in the half skirt in the 3D window clusters. Next, we'll delete the stitches of the waistband to the full skirt and stitch it to the new pieces. We'll also stitch the sides of the skirt. Let's simulate. To streamline our workflow, we'll begin by removing any patterns that are no longer necessary. In preparation for the next phase, we'll load a saved snapshot containing a two-layer skirt, a pocket, and a belt. To ensure we have all the necessary materials at hand, let's also include a file containing fabrics, seams, artworks, and trims that will be utilized in the upcoming step. Before moving on to the next step, We'll arrange all the pattern pieces of the outfit in the 2D window for easier editing. 
Next, let's incorporate some 3D trims into the skirt. Specifically, we'll assign a snap button to the pocket flap and a buckle to the belt. Our developers have extensively reviewed and enhanced the functionality of the 3D trims, making it even easier for fashion designers to work with and ensuring more precise placement of hardware elements. Now, let's assign the buckle and stitch it to the edge of the belt. Before stitching it to the other side of the belt, let's change the fabric of the belt. Using the Move tool, we can adjust the buckle to the correct position. To refine the belt appearance, we'll introduce a new internal line and make adjustments to the stitches, achieving a more realistic belt design. Moving forward, we'll allocate the newly chosen fabrics to the outfit. With these final design touches, our design work is now complete. Now, let's explore the enhancements we've made to our grading capabilities. For this example, we've already completed the grading for the pattern pieces in advance. To see these improvements, navigate to the Sizes and Grading section. Here, you'll notice a new eye icon that allows us to hide specific size options, creating a cleaner 2D layout. It's important for pattern makers to note that any altercations made to the pattern pieces will still be applied to all the sizes, even if their visibility is turned off. Now let's revert the changes and dress the graded outfit on the avatars of different sizes. We'll work with our Charlie avatar for size 98. After uploading the avatar, we'll undress the garment. Before we begin simulating the outfit on the Charlie avatar, Let's ensure we've selected the appropriate size from the drop-down menu. Additionally, we'll hide the belt and pocket pattern pieces from the 3D window, allowing us to concentrate on the positioning of the pattern pieces for the top and skirt. In this edition, we've introduced a new feature aimed at improving the fit process for pattern makers, the Link Piece Position Between Sizes checkbox. We'll uncheck this option, giving us the ability to independently adjust the position of the pattern pieces for each size. This provides greater control over the preparation phase for each specific size. This adjustment ensures that the cloth simulation starts from the most optimal point for each size, resulting in the best possible draping across all sizes. Now, let's follow these steps again for size 140. To do this, we'll use a duplicated, taller avatar of Emily. To begin, we'll remove the garment and select the appropriate size, then prepare for the adjustments. Let's head over to the 3D Review workspace to view all three sizes side by side. In this workspace, we'll fine tune the position of the pattern pieces for each size individually to achieve the best outcome once the outfit is simulated. Finally, we'll utilize a styling tool to make some additional adjustments to the garments. Let's return to the home workspace. In the final phase of our design process, we'll incorporate artwork and delve into the manual position by grade feature. This feature enables you to manually adjust the placement of the artwork. Just input a specific number for the placement. If necessary, you can unlink the artwork across different sizes to achieve precise positioning for each size. We can see from the various snapshots that the artwork remains perfectly aligned across all sizes. This functionality significantly streamlines a pattern maker's grading workflow.